In a study published on November 28th in the journal Science, an international team of researchers from the U.S., Kenya, and the U.K. presented the first direct evidence that two ancient human relatives, Homo erectus and Paranthropus poise, coexisted in the same immediate landscape. The team analyzed newly discovered fossil footprints at the site of Kubifora on the eastern shore of Lake Turkana in northern Kenya, which preserves two distinct types of ancient footprints left along the shores of the lake approximately 1.5 million years ago. These footprints reveal differences in anatomy and locomotion, offering the first concrete evidence that Homo erectus and Paranthropus boise shared the same environment and may have interacted. A number of fossil footprints have been found in East Africa, such as the famous trackway at Latole, Tanzania, made by Lucy species Australopithecus afarensis 3.6 million years ago. But researchers noticed something unique about the Kubifora trackway. Two bipeds with significantly different feet made the tracks along the lake margin within hours of one another. Several hominin species made their home at Kubifora over the span of about 3 million years, including two types of Australia pithecines and four members of the Homo genus. But because the fossil record is incomplete and fragmentary, paleoanthropologists could not determine which or if hominins lived on the same landscape at the same time. The newly discovered Kubifora footprint trail is about 26 feet or 8 meters long. They consist of a trackway formed by one species walking along the shore, with isolated footprints from the other species. There are also a variety of tracks from birds and hooved animals who must have tracked through the wet mud, including the giant extinct marabou stork, Leptoptilus falconeri, and a species of extinct zebra. These impressions were buried quickly after being made, meaning they occurred within a very short period of time. The footprints were made on a lake margin in silty sand that was probably a centimeter or two underwater. The water kept the footprints from cracking or being eroded while they're covered in a new layer of sediment brought by surrounding rivers. This process takes hours or days, meaning we can be almost certain that these different individuals interacted. Identifying which footprints belong to which species isn't easy. Fortunately, advances in 3D imaging technology are allowing researchers to study the shape of fossil footprints in more detail than ever before, providing more clues as to who made them. They found that two of the isolated footprints had high arches and a heel-to-toe footfall like modern humans. These footprints were likely made by our direct ancestor, Homo erectus, which had a very human-like body shape and size. However, the trackway of a dozen footprints revealed a different pattern. These tracks were much flatter, with a deeper four-foot strike compared to the heel strike. The researchers also noticed that the big toe was somewhat spread out and not fully in line with the foot as it is in humans, suggesting that the track maker was likely Paranthropus boise, a heavily built Australopithecine with large, robust jaws and a divergent big toe. The sizes of the feet varied, but the researchers do not have enough information to determine whether the track makers were males, female, or children. The dozen footprints were made by a Paranthropus boise individual who would have worn a U.S. men's size 8.5 or a women's size 10 shoe, while the isolated Homo erectus footprints were smaller, roughly a woman's size 4 to a men's size 6. For both species to coexist, they must have lived different lifestyles that weren't in direct competition with each other. One option is their diet. Paranthropus ate plants, whereas Homo erectus was an omnivore, which actively scavenged and hunted for meat. This large contrast in their diet would have been an effective way of niche partitioning these species, but it's just one possibility out of many. The interaction between Boise and erectus may have been akin to chimpanzees and gorillas, two species that have been seen engaging in both positive and negative social interactions. But as the newfound footprints were discovered within a few feet of one another and made within a short window of time, Paranthropus boise and Homo erectus may have been closer than we ever thought. It has been proven that gorillas and chimpanzees can form long-lasting friendships in the wild, so why not these two? It is extremely fascinating to think about what they would have thought when they saw each other and how they would have interacted. This coexistence appears to be more than a one-off, with a similar pattern of footprints found around 40 kilometers north near the village of Illeret. As these tracks were made within the same 200,000-year period as their Turkana fossils, 
it suggests Homo erectus and Paranthropus lived together for some time. It's likely that further evidence will be discovered in the coming years as researchers re-examine other sites with fossilized footprints. Homo erectus was an incredibly successful species of early human. They lived from around 2 million years ago until as recently as 110,000 years ago and were the first of our ancestors to spread out of Africa, establishing populations across Eurasia. Their range extended from the Iberian Peninsula in the west to the island of Java in the east. Homo erectus is widely regarded as a likely direct ancestor of modern humans. Although physical features vary depending on location, just like ourselves today, overall Homo erectus had modern human-like body proportions, an upright stance, a prominent brow ridge, a large face, and no chin. Their height ranged from 4 feet 9 inches to 6 feet 1, and their weight ranged from 40 to 68 kilograms, with males being larger than females. Their brain size evolved significantly over time, ranging from 600 cubic centimeters in early individuals to an impressive 1,200 cubic centimeters in later populations, comparable to the lower end of modern human brain sizes. This adaptability allowed Homo erectus to thrive in diverse environments, from the African savannas and grasslands to woodlands and even the rainforests of Southeast Asia. They made sophisticated stone tools, and they were skilled omnivores who ate anything they could in their environment, including hunting large game for meat. There is also evidence to suggest that they cooked their food, an innovation that would have improved their diet and social interactions. Intriguingly, scientists believe Homo erectus likely had a form of proto-language. Whether through words, grunts, body language, or facial expressions, they must have communicated effectively to achieve their remarkable feats of survival, adaptation, and migration. Paranthropus boise is a species of robust Australopithecine, who lived in East Africa from about 2.5 to 1.15 million years ago. They are characterized by heavily built skulls capable of producing high stresses and bite forces, thanks to their big teeth and strong chewing muscles, which attach to the large crest on the skull. While the morphology of the Boise skull and teeth indicate it could have chewed hard or tough foods, dental microwear analysis does not demonstrate that they regularly did so suggesting a wider, more diverse diet for Paranthropus boise. It's possible that this species only ate hard or tough foods during times when its preferred resources were scarce, relying on them as fallback foods. It was more likely a generalist feeder of predominantly abrasive C4 plants, such as grasses or underground storage organs. Males average 4 feet 6 inches in height, with females averaging 4 feet 1 inches. For weight, males average 49 kilograms and females 34 kilograms. Brain size was about 450 centimeters to 550 cubic centimeters, around 20% larger than a chimpanzee's. This species lived in environments that were dominated by grasslands, but also included more closed, wet habitats associated with rivers and lakes, overlapping with present-day Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, and Malawi. It's not entirely certain whether Paranthropus boise made and used stone tools, but their fossils have been discovered alongside stone tools in the same locations and time periods where they were known to live. This suggests that they may have had some association with tool use. If they did, it would reflect a high level of intelligence for their time. It's truly fascinating to consider the questions these discoveries raise. Did they interact positively, negatively, or simply avoid each other altogether? Were they able to communicate in any way? With time and further research, we may get closer to answering these intriguing mysteries. What's most important, however, is the incredible discovery of the footprints themselves, which is a remarkable window into the past. <laughs>